ooh, shifting over to like a fun one, kind of. Staying up all night expecting a guy to come over and he doesn't. I'll counter that with preparing. Ooh. And then not receiving. Yes. Let's bring it to the next one. (laughs) I like there's like nothing else to really say about that. You know, like those when people listen, they're gonna be like, yep. They get it, they get it, they get it. We've been there, we've been there. That's really it. Welcome, everyone, to yet another episode of your favorite podcast, Looking with Alexis and Cole. I'm Alexis. And I'm Cole. And whatever you've been looking for... It's always going to be right here, baby. Right here on this couch. Woo! One more time. One more time. <laughs> yes. Uh, and welcome back to the land of... Chicago hot dogs. Or sure. Italian beef. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's yeah, go with that. Yeah, the land right. of Italian okay. beef. Yes. The Italian stallions, not that. Polish sausages. Mm, Chicago. Yeah. Chicago. Chicago. Okay. No, but yeah. Um, from yeah. Miami. From Miami. Yeah. I, what, if for anyone who hasn't known or who hasn't seen my story or hasn't heard about my story, I've been in Miami for basically a week now. Yep. Um, which kind of felt like five years. I look like I aged five years in like a good way. You know, I got this mm-hmm. like blondes going on. Um, Loved it. Completely fantastic. Enamored by the city. I'll talk about that later, though. But yeah, anyways, was, how was your week? Whew, it was something, for sure. Um, you something. know, just a little bit of, well, a good bit of, you know, editing. It was different editing without you here. You know what it wasn't, though? A little bit of Lexus. I wasn't here. It wasn't a little bit of Lexus. <laughs> Purr. So, but yeah, there's that. And then after that, I mean... Just working, you know, again, my nine to five. But it honestly, it, it went well this week because I ended up finding out that I'm like top 10 in Ooh, like our org. We so, said he's a top. I'm a top. Yeah, I'm a top and I'm a 10. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like, you know, you know how like stressed I've been about that because I need that for like promotion reasons. Um, I need to like consistently be doing well and everything if I want to get this promotion. Um, so like super happy to to have seen that um, and just know that like all of my work um, is actually kind of I guess I don't know being credited and and now it's 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 I guess the uh, the fruits of my labors are are finally starting to mm-hmm. to, to rise like to that. rise and the rise up. Ooh, ew. <laughs> I can't sing y'all. Every now and then I'll hit a little a little note and I'll kind of surprise myself. But yeah, no, nah, you're not gonna sing me on like the voice or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Let, we just <laughs> might though. Tune in. Next or tune time. out. It's up to you, baby. It's up to you. Yes, but I think I mean the last time we were together was um for Dune too. Mm-hmm. Now we can finally recap that. I mean yeah. give me your thoughts first and foremost, because yeah. Yeah, an experience. I feel like we're. I'm like, can you see my face? I'm like, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna go watch it again anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so. this is a movie that, like, even if it's three hours long, like, I will be like, yes, I'm gonna go watch it. It was really well paced. Oh, I think very well paced. Yeah. I mean, there's so many movies where it's like this. This could have been shortened by like yeah. an hour, but no. I mean, I think every scene, every bit of that movie was so, I like monumental and so like important towards like you know, really understanding what exactly the society is like. Um, I think what, you know, people people will say that, like, it's, you know, great for cinematography and uh, everything. But I also, what I think was also set it apart was the acting. The acting was just, everyone did such a great job. Um, You know, even, like, kind of, like, the supporting actors, like, actors, like, you know, like, Florence Pugh, right? Mm -hmm. And and then... um, I guess like Austin Butler, which was Leia Sado or Sado Sado. Yeah, who yes, was yes. only in it for like a moment, but yeah, yeah, either yeah. Way. She was the one that was like uh, that gave the water of life to Lady Jessica, right? No, no, wrong one. This is the one who, um, she f-ed Austin Butler. <laughs> she remember she 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 was the Bene Gesserit that basically went and seduced. Um, oh yes, 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 yes. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To have a kid with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the fight scenes were just, oh my god! Like, I, I don't think I've seen 
or watched a movie recently that's really just kept me on the edge of my seat. Like I was shaking at moments. I'm like, literally, oh, like gag, gag, gag beyond, um, beyond uh, conception. And I mean, it's funny because like, did you ever like watch that SpongeBob episode where they like have a big worm? Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Oh of when, my like, god! When they were like, "Okay, now wrangle the worm," and he wrangled the biggest worm. And then it's funny because I was also talking to a boy on Hinge about this, and he's like, "Well, mm, like I'm good at wrangling worms, and you know what I'm talking about." And I was like, "Ding, ding, ding! Put me in the ring, coach." Put me in the ring, coach. <laughs> no, but um, but yeah, what are what were your thoughts? Oh my God, I can't. <laughs> I'm just still laughing about what you just said. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought it was an amazing movie, a cinematic experience, like for sure. I think everybody yes. I've talked to, I've been like, listen, like, if you're going to watch this movie, you need to go see it in theaters. And mm-hmm. like, usually I'm kind of like, I mean, you know me, I love to go to the movies, but I'm like, this movie, I'm like saying, don't wait for it to, to, to come out on, on streaming or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think Timmy's acting is just on a whole nother caliber now. Cause you know, I've always thought that he was great, especially in call me by your name. And like that end, like the end scene kind of like after um, him and dude that I don't remember his name's um, part. Uh, <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> are we calling? What about now? Anyways. Okay. Back to it. Yeah, but like, you know, his, oh my God, his acting was amazing in this. Yeah. Um, and I'm just, I think moving forward with the story, like, you know, Dune Messiah coming out, I'm super excited to see. For me personally, I want to see what happens with the story with like the Bene Gesserit yes. and, you know, like whether or not this story or, or everything that is kind of transpiring is something that they like planned or, you know, if it's a deviation from their plan, because really, I mean, the Bene Gesserit are like kind of controlling or puppeteering everybody and everything mm-hmm. from behind the scenes and everyone else thinks that they're in control when really they're mm-hmm. not. Uh, but then we see that kind of switch to where Lady Jessica becomes like the real reverend or the the top reverend mother yes. now, you know? So <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see also, she slays. I'm ready for Anya to come back. My little girl, Anya Taylor-Joy. Oh, the, yes, the, the, yes, the, the yes, sister. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Whenever she turned her head and she, yeah, oh, God. sorry, all spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, whenever she turned her little head, I was like, that's my bitch. Yes. I looked at Rain. I literally looked at Rain. I was like, Rain, is that my bitch? Actually, it was Tyler. Really? Was I looked Tyler. at Rain. Yeah, I was like, you were, <laughs> I was next to Tyler. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, no, yeah. And I mean, for people who don't know, Dune and Dune 2 are actually based on Dune, the book, obviously. But Dune, the book, is the sixth book in a 12-book series. So we still have a lot to get through. Mm-hmm. I know that's right. We'll I know before the know. before the next movie, I have the book, like I have the actual physical copy, but it's just so hard to get into it because there's yeah. a language, there's a political system, there's you know religions, there's mm. a whole lore to like really like wrap your head around, and it gets right into it. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense because it's right in the middle of the of the series. Um, what I do want to say is that like Dune Two Party, it's on the horizon because that Water of Life cocktail. Period. Oh my god! Like, have you, you had an Adios mother? Yeah, yeah. It's quite like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't like, had that in years. Yes. Oh I know, yeah. me too. Oh my gosh. And like, I'd like to think that like Lady Jessica before the movie and Lady Jessica after the movie is like me before, the me in Chicago before my Miami trip and me in Chicago, <laughs> Chicago after my Miami trip. Yes. Like, she's like all like, you know, like blinged out with like tattoos and her little get up. I'm like, you had a bit I'm of the water of life person. down there, huh? Exactly. Oh yeah, I did. Actually, baby. one of my <laughs> one of my friends actually went down to Miami when he when he came back from Miami. He had like tattoos. I was yeah. like, oh, I know. I wanted to get one, but uh, time. You don't even have a tattoo yet, right? No, I don't. Oh, I would. Yeah, my my first one's gonna be special. It's mostly because I'm really indecisive, but whatever. Yeah, anyway, speaking about Reverend Mothers. Guess who just came out with an album and gagged all of us? Our own reverend mother of the 21st century, Ariana Grande. Oh my gosh. Yes. Eternal uh, Sunshine. An amazing album after a long four year wait from yeah. positions. I can't, I can't believe it's been four years, yeah. to be honest. Yeah. You know, even though she had Thank You Next and, and, and like, all those songs were super solid, too. 
Um, this is her seventh full-length um, album. Seventh already. Seven Jesus. already, yeah. Um, and I would say that this, you know how pop stars are always like, oh, my new album is my most personal yet. Mm-hmm. I really do think this is her most personal yet. I think that um, the way, you know, she's just talking about all her stages of grief with like her, you know, her her recent um, divorce. And in so many ways, it's like the album is so delicate. You can hear it in her voice. Like, you know, even like in the way that her voice kind of like breaks, like at mm-hmm. some points, like in like, um, you know, We Can't Be Friends, like really just emotional songs. I just, I, I really thought the album was so tender and great to listen to and is so soothing. And in a way was, you know, Yes, and was like a house song. I was like, okay, yeah. this is Renaissance Part Two, but it really isn't. It really was more like a like a two thousands R and B album, R and B pop like kind yeah. of album. And I mean, it just I don't know. Whenever I listen to it, I kind of passively listen to it because I was at um, um, a friend's house like at the time, and I was just mm. kind of like, oh, okay. But then like I listened to it on the bus back, and I was like, Wee. and then you finally made me li- like watch the um, the, the music, music video. video. And for for we can't be friends. Yeah, we can't be friends. And I literally like, yeah, y'all. I literally looked at him. I'm like, I never want to look. I, like, I never want to see that again because <laughs> I just think that it's like, well, I, I just I know every. I'm willing to bet 100 percent of people listening or just anywhere they have some kind of like relationship, situationship, yeah. x thing that they're like, oh, I wish I could delete those memories from my mind. I know. You know. So just thinking about that in this like music video, and then even seeing how she. Like while still going through all of these different stages of grief, you know, and it's kind of like reminiscing on the previous relationship, you know, and even at times whenever she's like not exactly sure Mm -hmm. if she wants to continue going through with it, she does because she knows she has to move on from it. And I think also the reason why this album is so introspective is the fact that I guess part of the divorce agreement was not to come out publicly with details about the divorce. Um, and I think it's it's really funny because I, I saw this on Twitter where it's like a clip of like Ariana Grande when she was in Cat and Victorious, and it's that clip where it's like they didn't say I couldn't see. Ooh, that's horrible, but yeah. <laughs> they didn't say I couldn't see. Ooh. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I hit it, y'all? Did I hit it? Did you hit that shit? Yeah, don't expect to see me on The Voice, though. I think like, my favorite song so far is, like, Boy Is Mine. Yes. Great remake. We Can't Be Friends, of course. Yes. And then, um, what about you? Those two, for sure. I really liked, um, oh, my God, Second to Last. Imperfect yes. for Imperfect you. Imperfect for oh, you was God, great. That scale change was amazing. Yes, amazing. And then I actually, I, I saw on social media a lot of people didn't like this one, but I actually also like, maybe it's not, like, my fave, but I really like the first song only because I love a good opener for like an album and the first lyrics like just really stuck with me like like how do I know if I'm in the right relationship like I, I was just kind of like ooh, that's relevant right. how do I know like how yeah that's yeah, relevant yeah. especially like just I don't know being in our 20s and everything yeah Ugh. 20s are chaotic but like it's such a great time to like just learn um and continue learning and I'm sure mm-hmm. people like obviously in their 30s and 40s are learning but, like in a different way Mm-hmm. You know, um, so I don't let's let's talk a little bit about some L's in our 20s that we think we should be taking. We Once should be taking. We have taken. I guess. Have and should. Both. Yeah. You know, because like maybe some of them apply to you, but not me. But like, yeah. I don't know. What are some uh, coming to mind? First? OK, first and foremost. Breaking down in public. Yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. Very I easy. Too. I have two. <laughs> I said easy, done. I have two, but necessarily not so much like on my own. I've like broken down with like family. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, which is different because that's kind of like not necessarily in public, but like in front of my family because of many different things, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, what have you broken down about? Mine was a breakup Um, yeah. and I was, oh, mine was like one of my like, just worst breakups that I've had. And um, I was super duper uber like anxious um, because I like, I just, I like, I could not, this was in college also. And I just knew I couldn't see him. Like I was like, I don't want to see him on campus. Like I'll break down. 
and I knew that he was going to be at like the um um I guess people call it like the quad or whatever yeah. um you know doing whatever it is that he does because he was in a frat and um I had Red to go flags. out flags <laughs> no maybe but he he was in a frat doing his stuff and I was supposed to be there to take pictures of another friend another couple friends were in a sorority and I just I broke down because I knew he was going to be there and I was zoned out in the middle of class I like wasn't paying attention and I had to like literally run out of the classroom in the middle of it because I just started shaking and like crying and everything I was just like I don't want to see this man so um mine was for a relationship not for like anything else going through but you know that emotional emotional i was going through some emotional turmoil for like the last like two or three months of yeah. that year yeah. um going through that so yeah that was my breakdown and it was not fun i was literally having like a panic attack uh-huh no i know i mean i mentioned like in front of my family before but like this happened hmm, when i was in college and we were all getting together because one of my cousins had just bought a cat house so it was like a housewarming party and you know i was just having a ball having a fun time drinking whatever one of my like more like evangelical aunts was there. She mm-hmm. was like, "Ooh, like don't drink as much because you know what's gonna happen." And I think like this was like one of those instances where I kind of proved her right because at the same time, like you know, you know, I have a younger brother, right? Everyone kept on. My mom kept on being like, "Oh my god, like look after him, this, this, and that." And I'm like, "Dude, I just want to have a fun time, like you know." And then my other aunts were like, "Hey, like the brother's doing this and that." And I'm like, "Just leave him alone." But I just kind of had a breaking point. I'm like. I'm like, I like started screaming. I'm like, listen, I am not his mother. I am his brother. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Blah, 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 blah. And like, I think that I, I, I definitely did not approach it the best way. But I, I was screaming. I got emotional. I started crying. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I guess it was just kind of like an outlet for, you know, you know, almost kind of raising a kid in a way, yeah. you know, during high school and in college in a way. Um and just kind of like feeling just infuriated by just kind of all the responsibilities that comes with it. But like, I, you know, everyone was like, oh, he's just drunk, basically. You know, and everyone's just kind <laughs> of like, you know, he's just proving us right. But it, you know, And they'll never really yeah. understand it because I, I mean, I'm, I'm the oldest sibling and the oldest of my cousins. And mm-hmm. like, they're all like, we're all boys. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I get it. I feel that weight of like, you need to be perfect. You need to be example for them. And I'm like, can I be like, do I have time to be a teenager though? Like myself and, yeah. you know, make the mistakes, literally what we're talking about that I feel like, like are due to us, exactly. you know, are, are due to us as, as freaking young adults. Yeah. Um, but another one to move on. And I think this kind of ties into that, uh, or at least crying in public and being like nervous or anxious about that is caring what people think. This one I hear a lot from 30 year olds too. And they're like, you know, once you turn like 30 plus, like you really stop caring about what people think. Um, But that's something that you just have to go through. Um, And it really like ends up, I I guess like you end up making a lot of bad decisions or maybe decisions that you wouldn't have made um, if you weren't really only caring about what people were thinking, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that that's definitely something that maybe we've all done. I know I've done it a few times, you know, just basing my decisions off of what others are going to think rather than just doing what I want to do. Yeah, I think that I have always not really cared. <laughs> yeah. I think I've, I've never actually really cared too much, but I, throughout the years, I've kind of had a different revelation mm-hmm. in terms of, like, I haven't cared, but, like, publicly, like, outwardly, but, like, inside a lot of the things that I end up doing are done because i want people to have some kind of impression of me Mm -hmm. and that in of itself is caring about what other people think yeah you know what i mean yeah so it's like maybe this kind of impression that like you know kind of like doing things going out exploring all of this stuff like that like this is stuff that i want to do Mm -hmm. obviously like obviously um but it's also at some point i've kind of realized like am i doing this because I genuinely want the experience or am I doing it just because I want to have this like impression that my shit's together yeah. when it really isn't when maybe this is distracting from bigger issues in my life, yeah. you know, um, yeah. that investment of time, I think is something that in our twenties, we don't really think of because mm-hmm. in our minds, time is unlimited. Yeah. But 
It really isn't. I mean, what we are approaching our thirties, you know, uh, you know, and um, and like it's not to say that time is running out because I don't. I, I like to push back against that kind of ageist thinking of like, yeah. oh, like oh my gosh, you're twenty nine, like death, you know, your death is at your door <laughs> death now. Is coming. Yeah, death <laughs> is coming. Like I, 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 I do not like that because, especially because I think that I, you know, again. I think I get hotter, more successful, more cunty as, you know, age, as I, as I go throughout my life. We're taking uh, the opportunities that we have much more seriously and being able to choose between them. And just saying yes to everything is not a winning strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Learning how to say no is sometimes the hardest Sometimes thing. you have to say no, but. Instead of yes and. Yeah. <laughs> you caught on. You caught on. Yeah, I was like, oh. I was like, like, Lord Jesus, <laughs> like he's yeah. not gonna get it. Say that shit will be on chat. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, damn. It's okay. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> For those of you <laughs> who are listening with earphones, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, okay, let's see what else I have here. Okay. Ooh, shifting over to like a fun one, kind of. Staying up all night expecting a guy to come over and he doesn't. I'll counter that with oh. this has happened. <laughs> This has happened a couple of times actually mm-hmm. recently. Preparing. Ooh. And then not receiving. Yes. That's all I gotta say. Spring into the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like there's like nothing else to really there's say about nothing, that. Nothing you know, else. like those people listening, they're gonna be like, yep. They get it, they get it, yep. they get it. We've That's been there, really we've it. been there. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. really <laughs> it. Okay, let's see. Oh my god, running out of gas on the street. I, I wouldn't actually... Because you didn't I, drive, I've, really. I've never had a car. I Okay, so I drove. So I'll tell this story. I drove, you know, when I was back in Florida. And as a young 20-something-year-old, you try to push the limits of your car and your gas because, you know, you don't let us pay for gas or whatever. I... <laughs> my, my gas thing or whatever was, like, right at E. And I like I had, it was at E for like two or three days, oh and I was like God. it'll yeah, maybe like one or two actually maybe oh I'm being like too much, but I was like it's okay I'm in my car <laughs> I'm fine, and I knew this day I was like okay Cole you gotta go get some gas today yeah. I'll never do that again, um so mm. never say never. Well I don't have a car up here, <laughs> so like, like, so hopefully not. I, after that, I actually had to walk like a few streets down to the nearest gas station, and I had to buy like a like a gallon or whatever of gas, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then walk back and like put it in my car so that I can make it to the gas station. Yeah, so yay me! Yay. That was super embarrassing, but now I know. <laughs> now you know. Yeah, um, I think that th- I feel like this is also maybe you. Hot, like maybe we caught onto this, but I don't think our parents really talk about their twenties. You know what? Oh my god, they don't. I think my mom's talked to me about her twenties in the context of like meeting my father mm-hmm. and like school because she was in you know she was in med school at the moment um, back in El Salvador and she, yeah she had a lot of students. she's she had a lot of boyfriends. If that makes sense. Uh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, no. Um, like she was, she would tell me about like, oh, like you know, I dated this one guy who was like my best friend, and we broke up like four or five times, and then they actually still talk to this day, which is Aww. so interesting, yeah. And it's funny because like you know they got engaged at some point back in the twenties, and then they stopped because I think she got into some argument about his dog, which hmm. is so funny because she was like, okay, it's either me or the dog. That's she, you know she, what that sounds like your mother. I want though. the dog, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, no. That, so. Um, yeah, no, just kind of like twenties are kind of radio silent. Why do you think? Why do you think they do that? Maybe it's partly because you know that's so many decades past, like you know, ago. Okay. Or and maybe it's also blocking those memories. <laughs> I was you know? gonna say I think it's pride too. You know, pride. Yeah. especially with like because like, I've noticed that's like so true. I've noticed at least like for people of color. I feel like it might be a little bit harder for parents to come off as like, you know, still a parental figure, but like somebody that makes mistakes, you know, parents, like whenever they do something or they get mad at you and, you know, 
Yeah. Or, uh, I don't want to say like beat yeah. you, but you know, back in the day, whenever they used to beat us, exactly. and then they like never say sorry. They can't ever say sorry for yeah. it. They just kind of move on, you know. So maybe like it kind of goes hand in hand with that idea that like they want to to their child come off as like this responsible parental you know, like figure so uh, that true. doesn't make mistakes and they don't really talk about that much. Because exactly. I've noticed like, whether it be through TikToks or like stories with like some of my like white friends, their parents will be like, oh, like back in my day, I used to, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, obviously mm -hmm. this is, you know, like just dependent upon your parenting style and whatever else. I'm sure there's people of color with parents who are very, like very vulnerable and in, in, yeah. you know, out there. But I don't know for me i just I, I guess i never really thought about that but they really didn't talk about their l's and the things that they wish they would have done better um and i mean i guess that's a really good thing for us to kind of move forward right. with you know when, when it comes to our future children yeah. or whatever there are some other l's that we've taken um this one's funny because i think we can both relate to it now trips with situationships yeah, that's a big L. Let's talk about it. And I've done that twice. <laughs> <laughs> you said I did not get enough. I, had, I didn't time. learn. Yeah, from my yeah, first yeah. One. <laughs> yeah, let's definitely talk about this because this is like, I want seconds. You treated it like a Thanksgiving but you know dinner. What, though? Like, <laughs> it actually was probably one of the best things that happened because that first trip with that boy that it didn't work out with led me to, like, the trip was to Chicago. And had I never done that trip, I, I wouldn't be here right now because that's when I like realized I love Chicago and I want to move here. Right. So in a way, you won. In a way, won, I won. Baby. I won. Exactly. <laughs> no. Who could I won. host you then? Not us. You'd have to travel. He's not gonna listen to this podcast. I really don't think he is. He, he was a Pisces, and um, <laughs> he um. Oh my god. I like Pisces low key. Bro, bro, no, continue your story. That's a whole nother Continue segment. your story. Oh god. Okay, yes, yeah, you're right. Anyways, though, like he he um we we, we kind of started we we'd known each other for like a year or two prior to us like actually getting together and starting to date. He I think I like commented on one of his stories because I wanted to see what his hair color like what his hair color was and I wanted to dye it that. And then yeah. we started talking from December and this was all the way up until I believe February cuz I February or like beginning of March because that was when his birthday was. And I remember one day out of nowhere, he was like, again, we're not in a relationship. It's still like dating stages. And he was like, do you want to go on a trip? And I was like, wait, where did this come from? And he was like, I just thought about it this morning. I said, sure. And we booked the flights. Then literally two, three, four weeks later, he ends things. And we still have these tickets. Um, so we come here. To Chicago and I love Chicago but I was anxious the absolute whole entire time because all I could think about was like oh am I gonna get him back you know am I gonna is he gonna come back to me or something and he even like when we got drunk one day and went to brunch we had like bottomless mimosas and we he was like you know all over me like we kind of kissed and everything everything so, comes out in bottomless yeah everything comes out in bottomless literally and figuratively Ugh. and I genuinely thought that we were gonna get back together and by the end of the trip, he was still like, no, I don't want this. I get, <laughs> why can't we just have fun? And I was like, you know what? I will absolutely never do this again in my life. And then I did it again two years ago. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what are some other L's? Um, karma. How in what sense? Manifested? Karma being a bitch. You know, you do something that maybe is not the best or you make a mistake. And then it comes bites you in the back. I feel like karma's an, a whole life thing, though. Yeah. But really realizing in your 20s. Oh. I think that, like, I think that in, in high school or, or, like, before that. You're just doing you shit. Of, like, you don't really care. Stuff. No. And you're not only, like, you only do stuff, but you're not really fully grasping the consequences of your actions. Yes. Okay. But nowadays, I think it's, we understand it much more quickly. And we see it, we see karma manifesting in us. But yeah. at least I do. You yeah, know what I mean? I can see that. Yeah. I can go first on this one. Yeah, so go ahead. I broke up with an ex, big end of twenty twenty one, beginning of twenty twenty two. Um, and it wasn't like, you know, there's nothing wrong with the relationship. I think he was fantastic, great person, but I wasn't necessarily ready for a relationship of that caliber. So and I didn't want to just half ass it. I was 
very honest with him. I'm like, you know, I think we uh, share such a deep and wonderful connection where we can both be vulnerable. We have similar life experiences and similar values and similar ambitions, but I just can't be your boyfriend. So in a sense, I kind of had like an eternal sunshine moment, you know, with this guy. <laughs> um, and I really, he was super, super into me. We, I mean, we kind of like took like a month and a half kind of breaking up and it was, uh, it was really tough. Um, because I think that it, in hindsight, I think I could have given it a few more months and maybe just kind of like really talked it about, like talked it through with him mm -hmm. and kept on having these conversations. But I just kind of like, I chickened out, honestly. I really did chicken out. Karma bit me like a fucking mosquito in the beaches of Miami um, because it was shortly after I lost my passport on my way to Mexico. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Um, and then I also did some really, really, really stupid shit, like, um, during, like, a, a birthday party. And I ended up, like, losing a bunch of connections through that. Oh. And then just, I guess, it, not only that, but I was actually, you know, assaulted, too, at a bar, um, which was the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, and it not only assaulted, but I just, that whole situation, I didn't handle it well so i couldn't even sue yeah you know um and just like uh, i destroyed my phone yeah literally that whole that whole like that whole beginning of 2022 was shocking in terms of like how much devastation um and just like feeling miserable like i just felt like and, and not only that but like my research wasn't going well I was feeling disconnected with from from my friends. So it was from L everything. after L. It after was L. L after L after L, and I, and I, I was like, I just remember like a few weeks after I went to him, I'm like, here's all the stuff that you left in my apartment. I just think your spirits are out to get me. And even now, <laughs> thinking about it, now even thinking That's about it, real though, low key. honestly, yeah. Rujeria? Rujeria, he's uh, Puerto Rican. Yeah. Yeah. So like, oh my god. Oh, oh. I really do wish him well as well. Because, like, yeah, I just realizing that, you know, all these things, whether intentional or non intentional, everything that happens in your life mm -hmm. is ultimately a result of your decisions. Your own, yeah. And that's the hardest lesson to learn yep. in your 20s. Hardest pill to swallow in your 20s. Hardest pill to swallow, right? Um, and, um, you know, it, it might be hard to swallow some other things. But not as hard as that pill. Yeah. The, that... Like, the sourest cum to swallow. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, even even just sometimes like the, the ways that I it unintentionally act towards people that I possibly don't really like. Mm -hmm. You know, um, maybe, and I don't like, I'm never like outwardly like, I don't like you. I'm always like, I'm not going to talk to you, you no. know? Even that sometimes bites you in the ass because it's like, then you kind of realize, oh, that person's actually doing pretty well for themselves. And like, you know, like, mm, yeah, we're doing pretty fine though. So maybe that's just more of an insecurity. What about you though? What do you think about karma? I, I honestly, I won't say much about mine just to not like run around like or like just talk in circles. Yeah. Mine is just similar to yours. I think mine also came out of like a relationship, my first relationship. Um, and you know, I think now both of us can like acknowledge that, you know, there were like reasons for the breakup, maybe like on both sides and things that we both could have done a little bit better. Um, but I definitely was just new to the whole dating scene and everything. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't think I handled it with as much care as I probably could have. Yeah. Um, and especially like whenever you say I probably could have taken a couple extra months to really like dive a little bit deeper into it um, and try to kind of work it out because he was somebody that like really, really, really did care yeah. um, for me. And yeah, unfortunately same. at the moment, like I broke his heart whenever it happened. Mm -hmm. um, but now he's in a thriving relationship and I'm not. So <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but like super happy for him. And you know, everything happens for a reason. Um, and obviously that just, it wasn't it. But post that situation, every single situation ship relationship i had after that i was kind of like i feel like this is karma like trying to beat me the up mm. like huh, what did what did demi say i'm gonna beat that bitch up that was karma she do you haven't seen that reference 
Oh my god, there's like a. I'm gonna show it to you. Yeah, <laughs> Y'all know somebody knows out there. I'm just, I'm just thinking about the karma um, ice spice feature. Okay. Anyway, so <laughs> we're gonna move right on from yeah. that. <laughs> and we are rolling back around to your Miami trip. Yes. Again, welcome back. I'm glad you had a safe flight. I know. Oh my god! Contrary to everyone's expectations, I did not die or get arrested. Thank God. Or get kidnapped. Or Yay! did you no like no no arguments with friends? No, no I mean, The Miami again. curse. You got through the Miami yes, curse. Yes, I got through the Miami curse. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I think the Miami trip was a win. I think that I got a taste of everything, almost everything that Miami. And everyone. Has and everyone. Ooh. <laughs> um, so I was staying in Edgewater with uh, mm -hmm. one of my friends, um, and it, the. The reason why I was in Miami to begin with was to celebrate her birthday and also my one of my other friend's birthdays. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I got a chance to kind of go to Wynwood. Lovely. Love, love Wynwood. Um, I got a chance to go down to Brickles. Super bougie. Super yes. nice, too. Brickles bougie. Yeah. Midtown is cute, too. Midtown kind of reminded me of, like, Lincoln Park in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Edgewater, uh, I would say, would be kind of like... Maybe like Edgewater here. I yeah, mean, I was gonna say. Like I was gonna be like River yeah. Northish area, no, but, with like like, the, but better, better Edgewater, like Edgewater in hand. Um, yeah. And Wynwood would be kind of like Logan, West Loop. In a way. You said Wynwood. Wynwood would be like West Loop. Like West Loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, and then I also went to South Beach. Um, South Beach is nothing. That like shit it. show. Yeah. <laughs> the shit show it's that is Miami Beach. Quite South nothing Beach. like South Beach. I mean, I guess you could say it's Lakeview, but not really. Um, but um, wow. I was it kind of like blew all my expectations out of the water. I like it's maybe just that trip specifically. I mean, I think I, you know, we had a boat party, right? Mm -hmm. I jumped off the boat, I got lit on the boat, yeah. everything on the boat. Um, you know, I won a dance competition, which was so unexpected because I'm like, I'm literally, there's like two other like professional dancers. That video dancers. haunts my dreams. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. That's just me on a regular Thursday. Um, so the dance competition, um, I had lots of, lots of great experiences. <laughs> Let's just say that, um, I mean, I, wow. Like, I met some really, really, really cool guys down there. And I just say, like, I'm just thinking about, like, like give me one more week, and I think I really would get married. <laughs> you would have got married? You would have eloped? Married. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just That's kidding. Crazy. I'm just kidding. That's a little too crazy. That's so funny that you had that experience, too, because, like, when I was down, and maybe, you know, it's, like, the whole, what is it, like, the... Like the new boy syndrome, you know, like you come yeah. down and everybody wants you because they recognize that you're the new guy in the room in the space. Because yeah, like when I was down there, for those of y'all who don't know, I used to live down there and like before I moved to Chicago and like I did not have that experience. I was like the dude, the guys are so superficial. There's nothing going on here. Like, oh my God, my dating life, like the dating pool has piss in it, mm. you know? Um, but now I've learned that the dating pool has piss in it everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. just a big kitty pool full, yeah. full of piss. There's baby turds everywhere. Yeah, there's like <laughs> shit in it. Yes, you know, look, yes. you know what? We almost got real dirty. I almost said there's like oh corn flakes in it. But yeah. you know what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, but now like looking back at it and living in a different place, I'm yeah. kind of like, oh, I would move back eventually mm -hmm. to to Miami, but not not right now. You know, I think my... My journey is still away from home, away from the family, mm. and well, not necessarily friends because I like I text them all the time. I'm like, I miss yeah. you guys. Come to Chicago. Um, but I think eventually I could see myself going. Also, once Ron DeSantis is out of freaking office, please get him the hell out. I know, right? Like, sorry, all. Well, Jesus see, that's Christ. the thing. I was talking about it. I'm like, South Florida should just secede. Huh, at this damn point. At this point, um, I would say. I, I have a different perspective because I'm not from there, but I'm like, yeah. you know what? This could be somewhere I could live. I was I like, see that. I was kind of, I was, I, I was not expecting that. And, and I, I went that. there. No, I mean, you know, I was like, I was like, oh, it's going to be like, you know, this perception of Miami just being kind of like messy and just like, 
I don't know. It's it's messy. It is messy and undignified, but it has its cute moments. It yeah, has its it niceness. Is. Yeah. Um, and that's what really shocked me. It, it has a little bit for everything and every kind of vibe. And I mean, I was just there and I'm like, wow, I've like probably, you know, I haven't even experienced everything that there is to offer. And but I tried to. I mean, I extend my trip from Wednesday to Sunday, uh, to Saturday, I mean. Um and um no, it was just a lovely time. Uh I think that uh what's some other things that I went to like the Soho Beach House, which was mm-hmm. super fun. I felt kind of like I that's my like been, celebrity I moment. Even been to Soho yet, yeah, so. that was my celebrity moment. If anybody can get us into Soho Chicago, oh please. my god, hit us up. Yeah. Yeah, come on now. You you can be <laughs> a guest. It comes like... with a promo, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what else? Like, I think that there's just, I mean, I went out so many times. Like, I literally, I knocked out last night. And I was like, I was so ready to die. I knocked out on the plane ride. Here. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm well rested. I'm the most well rested that I've been for a whole week. And that's saying something. <laughs> like, uh, and like, you know, just like my friend lived in such a nice building. So I would just like go downstairs and chill by the pool and soak in the sun. Um, you know, I have like knocked out on the beach. At some point, just what a dream! What a dream! Everything down there just tastes a little better. A sun-kissed orange dream. Yeah, everything down there just tastes a little better. Oh, the food! Oh my god! Where did you go? You didn't tell me. Yeah, so I mean, I went to one eight hundred Lucky, cute little like Asian food hall. One eight hundred Lucky is really delicious. Um, we had a bunch of tacos from Coyo Taco. Yes. yes. I haven't been to Coyo. Did you go to, uh, did you go to the club in the back? No, I haven't, but I heard it's you like know, a speakeasy. Okay. Yeah, yes. I haven't. I've also heard it's really good. That was actually the first speakeasy I've, I've ever been to. Oh, no yeah. way. Um, they also, in Midtown, there's this like this coffee shop called, called Pasión de Cielo, mm-hmm. which has like coffees from all around the world, like single origin coffees. And that coffee slapped. And right next door was a fantastic french bakery as well uh, yes i did see oh, that oh my gosh Ugh. and then um what else i had this like uh, pizza from like east side pizza or something like that which was really good mm-hmm. and then um I, I had like colombian food from this one place oh, i forgot i forgot but anyways point being everything there was just delicious delicious it really fed into my deludiness like Low key. I was like, oh, yeah. I live here now. I'm like, la, la, la. And I knew it would. Before you left, I didn't really say much. But like in my head, I was like, he's going to he's gonna love it. He's going to absolutely love the chaos of it all. Like the yes. food, the different cultures. Um, I think one thing that I really, really miss about living down there is all of the Spanish and like the Caribbean food. Yeah. Um, you know, like I, I have not had oxtails and like rice and beans oh, yeah. and like gravy in so long long and i don't even know where to get it up here but like honestly i wouldn't even probably trust there's it. a place in my neighborhood here really yeah have you had it i haven't yet but i want to it's on my list we'll report back yeah we'll report back yeah next episode um i would say also uh, the boys oh mm, the my God. boy is mine. mine all those boys were mine <laughs> all you know the boys I mean? were mine wow 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 i mean <clears throat> Chicago boys don't have anything Oh no! I'm sorry. There's some cute. No, there I'm are cuties sorry. out there. Hello. I'm sorry. Hello. Oh, I don't know. I just like, I don't know. Not me getting on my like, Latino body gang, but like Latinos. <laughs> that's where it's at. I'm sorry. <laughs> Out to my Latino. Me to Latino. Me to Latino. <laughs> no, but um, also uh, you no. Know, it's funny because when I got to the airport, I'm like, oh my god, Cole, the white people are speaking Spanish. Yep. <laughs> and I'm like, and they, it's, it's, you know, it's so funny because like. Miami, which it makes sense. Miami is the only place where you go and like they get mad at you if you don't speak Spanish. Yeah. Like, you don't know how many times yes. I've I've been around Miami. Somebody starts speaking Spanish to me and I'm like, oh no hablo. And they're yeah. like, they're like, tisk. Just look at me. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like I love you all. I'm sorry I'm in your neighborhood not speaking Spanish, even though I want to get some pastelito. Yeah, you're just such a gentrifier. I know. Well, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but but yeah no i um i'm really looking forward to the next time i go to miami like my friends are going for ultra and like unfortunately Wait, isn't that soon because that's, that's like around my weekend. birthday yeah that's next yeah. weekend but no no it's two weekends from now yeah but like i'm literally jumping on a plane on wednesday to go to new orleans so 
I'm crazy. Back on the trips for you. I'm so tired. Maybe I'll actually film a promo next time. In New Orleans. Yeah, I know. You should have something. I know. Up. In Miami, I was just too everything to film promos. So, yeah. Maybe I'll be on. Yeah, but um, well, I'm so glad that love you. Love Miami. Yeah, I'm glad that you loved it. Yeah, it reminded it. me a lot of L.A. And you know L.A. You know I love L.A. So, I was like, L.A. and Miami. They're like sister cities, you know. I said that. And, you know, the great thing about it, too. I think I got some personal growth in because I started the trip with Sub Pop Miami and I ended it with Eternal Sunshine. Aww. Uh, let's say that. And that's on um, what? That's on um, personal growth. Oh. I was going to say period, but. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> hey guys. Thanks for tuning in for our third episode. We appreciate each and every one of you guys. Stay tuned because we have a surprise for you in the fourth episode. Because whatever you're looking for, it's right here, baby.